to your family from mine in gratitude for your continued service. J.J. Valenti. Looks like little Harry Callahan here really is with the Sacramento boys. You got stones, <laughs> Pee-wee. I like that. Have yourself a drink. On the house. Matches, put down your gun. You look like a moron. <sighs> Hey, Artie, he's back. Is Edna always out here? Oh my gosh. It's really late and she's out here. Actually, let me see if we can find Artie. Pardon me, sir. Uh, From the way you're dressed and your general aura of seediness, I can infer only one thing. You're heading for Tannen's speakeasy. Am I right? Artie did. No. Uh, no? At least you possess enough shame. How does she not recognize him? Unfortunately, I don't have the power to stop you, but I beg you to tarry here a few more seconds and listen to my song. Me, 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 me. Self-respect, but you should care. What? Uh... In heaven's name! <laughs> oh, sorry, Miss Strickland. Uh... Just a little experimental prototype gone momentarily awry. Mr. Brown, why is there a dog in that vehicle? Why? Well, well to advance the human condition, of course. Hello, Harry. Oh yeah, did you leave Einstein there? Callahan, what are you doing in that getup? We left Einstein, didn't we? We didn't take him back to 1986. It's just my new look. I'm trying to prove that you can dress like a gangster without being a gangster. You know? How exciting! You'll have to give me an exclusive sometime. Right now, I've got some souls to save. And you'll have to get an eyeful of my newest experiment. You're not angry about the rocket drill? <laughs> Water over the bridge. I've moved on to bigger and better things. Come by the gazebo when you get a chance. I'll be setting up. You won't believe what Ainy and I have been up to. Harry, you're just in time. How have you been, Emmett? I know I haven't seen you in a couple of months. I'm great, and I owe it all to you. Really? Yes. That argument I had with my father during our jet drill experiment gave me the incentive to finally quit that dreary court job. I've committed myself full-time to a life of science. So, uh, thanks for watching Einstein while I've been... Uh, away. It's been a pleasure. He's proven to be a surprisingly willing test subject. It's almost as if he's been working with me for years. <laughs> More like decades. What's the story with the little car and all this equipment? Einstein and I are conducting a few experiments with this one-quarter scale model to work out a few hitches in my planned demonstration at the Hill Valley Expo in a couple of months. A radio-controlled car? No. Well, yes, but there'll be so much more than that. It will amaze the world. Aha! Got it! Got what? I'll show you! Ready to go, Einstein? Oh, boy. <laughs> Watch this! When this baby hits 23 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious <laughs> cow flop. Wow. 23 miles an hour. Einstein! No! Get him out of there! Not to worry. I've got a fail-safe eject mechanism around here someplace. How's a guy his age gonna make something like Nothing that in the thirties? Nothing. The early thirties. How? <laughs> I'll go see if I can find something to help. Or someone. <laughs> hmm. 
Majestic arms. Transients welcome. Well, they don't get more transient than me and Doc. And I was trying to talk to Doc, but whatever. Can I go in? Hey, Doc. How's the room? It's a little cleaner than I would have imagined for a depression era flop house. How are your investigations going? Are you sure Tannen's supposed to be arrested by Officer Parker? The guy's a mess. Mess or no mess, I'm absolutely certain that Parker's your man. In fact, it's his arrest of Tannen that will eventually lead him to become Hill Valley's chief of police. That seems really unlikely. Where'd you park the DeLorean? I hid it in the DeSoto lot. Nobody's buying cars these days, so it should be safe in there. Hmm. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me I'd run into your younger self tonight? Because I don't remember being out here tonight. Clearly, your interactions with my younger self two months ago have slightly altered my personal timeline. I never have the nerve to perform public experiments like he's doing. No matter, those experiments will be forgotten once I've seen Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Yes. Right now, my younger self is fiddling around out there with rocket propulsion systems for his demonstration at the expo. The thing that'll kick off your scientific career. Exactly. Now, the rockets are a horrible idea, and I'll soon realize that they'll never work. But eventually, I'll wander into that movie theater and see Frankenstein and clear my mind. I've kept the ticket stub from that movie in my wallet ever since. See? Why? Because it's during this movie that I'll have the inspiration for my breakthrough at the expo. Doesn't have anything to do with reanimating the dead, does it? Not the way you're thinking, no. <laughs> During that famous scene when Colin and Clive turned the wheel that raised that shrouded figure into the tower and that bolt of lightning struck, well, let's just say more than one brain was reanimated that night. <laughs> I saw him. Who? My grandpa, on his streetcar for just a second. Doc, we gotta find him. Why? Trixie thinks she's got something that could put Kid away, but Artie's the only one who can tell her for sure. I guess he's kind of her tutor or something. Ah, so that's the connection. When your grandfather disappeared from Hill Valley for two months, the bond between him and Miss Trotter was severed, eventually leading to a timeline in which Trixie lost her nerve to betray Tannen. Yeah? We've got to find your grandfather. Any sign of Artie? Haven't spotted him yet. Emmett's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Einstein's a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted, and I'll handle the rest. <laughs> okay. I better get back to fixing history. Be careful, Marty. No, this way. It's locked. Guess I'll have to find some other way to rescue Heine. I gotta distract young Doc. Don't worry, Emmett. I'm sure you'll get it right someday. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Right now, I'm more concerned with Einstein. Why don't you take a break from Einstein Patrol for a minute? Maybe go see a movie or something. Thanks for the offer, Mike. But once Emmett Lathrop Brown sets his mind on a task, nothing can distract him from his purpose. And right now, that purpose is rescuing your dog. Wait, Mike, didn't he say his name is Harry Callahan? Or did he tell Doc his name was something else? I don't know. Have you seen that Frankenstein movie yet? I hear it's pretty inspirational. Not yet. I've been so busy with my rocket car that I haven't found the time. But I'm planning on going tonight. At least I will once I get Einstein down. What's up with you and Edna? A couple months ago, I could swear she was making goo-goo eyes at you. That was before my father had her stay sober society meeting thrown out of our house. Now she takes every opportunity she can get to snipe at me and my work. It's very distracting. What went wrong with your rocket car? I'm not entirely sure. As soon as we get Einstein down, I'm gonna go look for it. Do you know anything about Officer Danny Parker? My pop says he's a good cop when he's not drinking. Good. 
Well, it's now I hear he drinks all the time. <laughs> well, I'll go off and see if I can get some help. You do that. I'll stay here and see if I can think of a way to get Aini off that ledge. Alright, how do I distract him? Probably has to do with this thing. Don't touch those! They're very sensitive! Mm -hmm. Sorry. Don't touch Stop those! Out. They're very sensitive! Sorry. I can't tell if he's getting closer when I do it. Don't touch those! No, They're it's very the sensitive! Sorry. <laughs> All right, let's see. Donate to the clock tower fund. What's wrong with the clock tower? It's not broken, is it? Not in the slightest. Whew. It's just painfully drab. I'm raising funds to commission a sculptor <sighs> to place a couple of handsome ornamental statues on either side of the clock face. Something to inspire the citizens to do their civic duty. Something like lions? Or gargoyles. You can't beat a good gargoyle. What's all this? These are my pamphlets, laying out in scientific detail the horrors visited upon those who succumb to the temptations of alcohol. <laughs> Lost Fortnite. I am particularly fond of that one. It tells the true life tale of Johnny, who woke up in a pile of his own sick, completely unable to remember the previous two weeks of his life. Heavy. Actually, the pamphlets are quite light. See? This is no time for word games. Hey Emmett, what do you think of this? Is that Lon Chaney? The hair's all wrong. I'm hunching. No, I don't want to point that out. I don't want to knock him out either. Hmm. Could Arthur be in there? It's way too dark and crowded for me to tell. Let's see. Mm, I wonder what'll happen. Need a light? <laughs> Turn that thing off. I've been distilling tannins hooch into rocket fuel all afternoon. One stray match could light me up like a Roman candle. Mm. No wonder. The only thing I want to break this bottle on is one of those goons' heads. He's still saying that. Or maybe try talking to Doc. I don't know. What do I do? Oops. Hey, Doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? Emmett's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Ein is a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm, I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted, and I'll handle the rest. <sighs> yeah, I distract him. Hey, who did burn down Tannen's original speakeasy anyway? I still don't know. I'd really like to find out before we go home. I never did get a straight answer about why he came back to 1931 in the first place. It's, uh, personal. When this is over, I'll tell you all about it. I'm gonna hold you to that, you know. Can you explain all this? I'm confused. It's very simple. In the original timeline, Timeline A, the speakeasy arsonist was never caught creating one of Hill Valley's enduring historical mysteries. Okay. When I traveled back to 1931, I created Timeline B, in which I was misidentified as the arsonist and subsequently killed by Kit Tannen's goons. Einstein came with me, and somehow he ended up in the DeLorean when its failsafe mechanism triggered sending it back to 1931.